Little John. Let's preface this with stating that you've heard of the Fermi paradox, okay? The idea that we're in this, such a vast cosmos that has to have life, but yet we can't find it, right? It's just, where is it? It's a, it's a paradox. It's so weird that it should all be out there, but it's not. And that's the thing that I want to us to wrap our heads around. Too many people get stuck in this, I don't want to call it a primitive mindset because that's not a nice thing to say, but it's a mindset where I think changes over time. It evolves as you start to look at it. If you were some advanced group, something that have reached so far in sophistication that all of these things that we think are important are almost like silly in that case, and you were advanced, you would not be just traveling around in some craft. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. Not only that, but points between star systems are so many thousands of light years that those are just conventional thinking. I know I'm going to offend a lot of UFO people out here, and I'm sorry, but <laughs> I, I really do think that we have to look at all of this in a completely different way. For instance, remember when the, you've, have you seen the movie Contact with Jodie Foster? I just saw it. I just saw it. Yeah. 90% and I don't know if that number is actually accurate. I'm just throwing that out there. People sure. were like disappointed in that movie, right? Because oh that's my God, true. We're going to finally see these aliens, right? Did you? No, yeah. they created this space for her, not to spoiler alert, no, nobody's seen it. They <laughs> yeah. create this space for her and then they take on this representation of her father and then they, they communicate through her father in a place that's not earth, right? It's some kind of a creation of a place that would be comfortable for her. Shows like an ocean with ocean waves coming in because they know we're from earth, right? That's that's what we're comfortable with. And that's, of course, that Carl Sagan was one of the main people who wrote that movie, yeah. right? I think that's the mindset we should wrap our heads around is that not like little green men flying around in these ships and landing and coming out and deciding to, no, I don't think that's how it is at all. And I think that's why the Fermi paradox exists because any group that's advanced wouldn't just pollute a timeline of another culture by just flying around everywhere and be like, hey, you know, waving to us. That's silly. If you reach that that advanced state, why would you do that, right? And that's exactly what all the evidence I see really points towards is that, yes, there were influences that were absolutely intelligent influences from nearly every one of these cultures. Either the culture was started from a knowledge seeding or those individuals that were already incredibly wise and had learned that some ancient priests or whatever were traveling and then teaching others. That's how I think that all of this went down based on how I've studied it. But it means that we need to change our perception about how we view that polluted term aliens or how we view. And I don't even I don't even use that term. I just I use something like entity or being or or whatever it is, because frankly, we don't even know um, what's possible. Our perception our, you know, our five senses in this really limited physical world, we can't see most of really what's around us. And, and I know you know what I'm talking about, right? If someone was to go into a deep state of meditation, even potentially take some, some of these psychoactive things, like you mentioned, DMT, anyone that goes down to the, the Amazon rain, rainforest and meets with the shaman and drinks ayahuasca, right? DMT, the primary component of that goes into a place that's not our reality. There's no other way you can describe it. It's not our reality any longer. You've now left the material, physical reality and you're somewhere else. What does that mean? Well, the ancients state that our reality is only one of like a sandwich-like or onion-like view of what reality really is. It's like layers of perception, right? Dimensions layered on top of one another. And we are almost like in the middle, sandwiched in the middle. Most of us can't really perceive the higher realities or even the lower realities. We're sort of stuck in this, like a cone mentality of view where we can't really see much of what's happening around us. But what happens when you break down those barriers, right? You take those things, it shatters those paradigms and those barriers. And all of a sudden you go into a place that is hard to describe and there's intelligent beings there every time. That's what everyone always says, right? Always some kind of intelligent beings there. And they communicate and they say incredibly intelligent things. They don't tell you, hey, this is the best way you can go bar barbecue some steaks. Yeah. <laughs> they don't, they, none of that stuff matters at all. That's all silly, almost silly right. and stupid. This is how you can learn to change. This is what consciousness is. This is blah, blah, blah. They go on and on, right? UAPs are a real thing because when we were kids, this statement just wouldn't, you could not have that on mainstream, on CNN, not even, I forget CNN, on 60 Minutes. Yeah, those are, yeah, we don't know what that is acknowledgement of it. I'd love to know what you, if you have any, just uh, take on sure. what that is and why now, because they're not new yeah. 
It's not new footage. Now, this is going to definitely piss a few people off, and I'm sorry. Um, but I want to provide my side of it based on the evidence and just to, uh, to help clarify things. First of all, yes, those craft, those things, yeah, those are real. Those are those are there, right? I'm not mis I'm not trying to be like pretending those things aren't real. Absolutely, those are real. But when you start looking into things like the Nazis and what they were playing with, with some of the technology during when the Germans were looking at some of the advanced technology, one of the reasons why they actually lost the war was they started getting so obsessed with technology. Not that I'm saying anything about which way it should go. I'm just stating the fact. <laughs> Um, you got you, yeah. they, they started getting obsessed with technology and they started playing around with anti-gravity technology. And you can see all kinds of papers on that. When World War II was ending, the United States was frantic to get a lot of this advanced technology because they wanted to be the first one to create an atomic bomb. And they knew that the Nazis were close. But they were also playing with things like anti-gravity technology and all these things, which where that came from is another discussion, right? But they had that information and that knowledge. And so just go look it up on your computer and this, you can pull this up, but it's called Operation Paperclip. And they went over and they took like over a hundred, and they might even a thousand of these Nazi scientists, and they brought them back to the United States and they basically just like tried to take every bit of knowledge they had. And all of a sudden you get like these, uh, these incidents of these weird craft flying around the United States and they're like kind of covering it up and then all these things. And then here we go. The United States becomes the most advanced technological superpower of the world. Just like out of nowhere, right? You really start to find out that it really was German Nazi technology that they took. And then you have all these strange bases that are opened up by the U.S. government, like Dulce and all these other things. And you can't go near them. And that's where they always see these craft flying around, right? And there's a lot of, well, not always, but that's commonly where you see these things happen around these super high-end military bases that are not supposed to exist. I believe, based on what I've studied, that most of that is secret government technology that they're just kind of like testing and, and, and playing around with, mm -hmm. right? And then they can't say that. So they kind of pretend they're hiding in like, it's oh, it's aliens, right? So the people are looking at the wrong, the wrong sure. way, it's like misdirection the whole time. Really, when you think about it, like I was saying when I was, when I was discussing before, why would intelligent group travel thousands of light years from some star system somewhere to just blatantly fly around obvious in front of us and with the knowledge that you're polluting that entire timeline of that species and causing all of those problems that you're causing the, the easiest way to say it is i think it would be irresponsible completely irresponsible and i just think that that's why the fermi paradox exists because any group that was able to get advanced enough to be able to travel the stars wouldn't just be in some craft. They would be using things like dimensional gateways, means to travel in ways that aren't linear. They wouldn't be a linear mindset. And I think that's how we should look at these things where a lot of the stuff that were like, for instance, a lot of this stuff you just mentioned, these disclosure, I think it's misdirection. People are focused on that. They're not focused on the other things. They're not focused on who these influences were of all of these ancient civilizations. Why, when you go to a place, place like Machu Picchu in Peru, why you see incredible mortarless megalithic blocks, giant multi-ton blocks on the bottom most levels. And then as you go up, it becomes sim more simplistic using brick and mortar. If we're told that civilizations were more advanced later and not earlier, it's completely backwards. Now those are the things that we really should be asking about because they break open the paradigm of all of what's happened here and, and where, that, where that inf those influences came from.